Now, class, Mr. Tiger will show us how Kellogg's Sugar Frosted Flake cereal starts out. This a flake field? It's a cornfield. Kellogg's toast corn to golden flakes and adds a secret frosting. Helps keep them extra crunchy and delicious. It's part of your good breakfast and tastes. I know. Great. Sit down, breakfast, and don't eat, and you'll discover why it's great. Mr. Tiger, you're wonderful. <laughs> oh, shucks. It's 10 p.m. Do you know where your children are? of all coastal areas, surf cities staggered under fierce winds recorded at 90 miles an hour. No estimate is yet as to loss of life. However, emergency disaster units in the area report at least 20 persons dead or missing and scores injured since the main force of Hurricane Emily hit yesterday. Included in the casualty list is WDTV's cameraman Don Harrison, who suffered a broken leg and multiple bruises when he was struck by flying debris during the heroic filming of the scenes you have just witnessed. The United States Weather Bureau forecast report that no further danger is anticipated from Hurricane Emily. Her main force is spent, and latest estimates place her position from 50 to 100 miles at sea. WDTV makes an urgent plea in behalf of Mr. Leslie Turner, president of Turner Electronics Corporation and one of Surf City's most prominent citizens. Families living along the coast are asked to please be on the lookout for any signs of the motor launch Bel Paso, which was on a cruise when the hurricane hit. Aboard the missing craft are his daughter, Jerry Turner, Frederick Macklin, and two employees, Samuel Ching and Chris Kamana. The craft has been missing for two days, and last radio contact placed its position directly in the path of the storm. We appeal to you to report any information immediately to the Coast Guard authorities. And now stand by for a remote on-the-scene coverage by your special events channel, WDTV. <laughs> to say some clothes for you, but if they have formal dances on this island, I'm afraid we're out of luck. Very funny. You have an overwhelming sense of humor. Where's my powder blue cashmere shorty? And these things are all wrinkled and the stains will never come out. Look, you're lucky to be alive. It's about time you got off of that high horse of yours, Jerry Turner. This hurricane wasn't my idea. 
There's a lot of things we had to say more important than your wardrobe. At least we saved the radio. We'll be all right. Come on now. How about a little smile? I hate cheerful people. Don't try so hard. You know, if it wasn't for your disposition, I might mistake you for a pretty girl. This canvas is supposed to be waterproof. If it isn't, we can get our money back. Oh, I'll have to hand it to you, Sammy. If you hadn't thought to protect the radio when the big blow hit. My old man says I'm as smart as a cook in a cheap chow mein joint. You know, they load the noodles with spaghetti and make it stretch a little first. What were you doing? You nearly covered me with sand. Chris, can I see you a minute? I'm awfully sorry, Miss Turner. I'll be more careful hereafter. Oh, forget it. Sammy, you may as well call me Jerry. It looks like a very informal island. Where are we, Chris? I not know for sure. Well, you know this group of islands like the inside of your hat. This one never appeared in my hat. Mr. Mecklen, I not believe it even chartered. You sure? Very sure. Then this may be it. Yes, Mr. Mecklen. Could be it. Hey, guess what? We may have been blown to the place we were looking for. This radio will only receive, Mr. Macklin. I can't even send home for money. You might at least have thought to save me a pair of Torridor pants and one lousy pair of shoes. Hey, you two, didn't you hear what I said? We may have found the island. Congratulations. If anything's going to be found right now, I want it to be me. Your father financed this trip. If this is the island, at least he got something for his money. He got what he wanted. He got rid of me. Would have served him right if we'd all drown in that storm. Jerry! Don't Jerry me! If it hadn't been for you and your ideas about an island with strange creatures, we wouldn't be here now. Fred Macklin, you get me out of this horrid place and you do it right now. Hey, listen! They're looking for us! They're too high. They can't possibly make a sound. Here we are! Here! They're going to bomb us? We overheard their radio conversation. It was a preliminary scouting crew. Tomorrow, the next day, the day after that, the island may not be here anymore. Chris, we're short on our luck again. There's no one on this island besides ourselves. The Navy would have investigated before they decided to bomb. They'd make sure it was uninhabited. You're wrong, Mr. Macklin. I find fresh footprints. Human footprints. Real crazy. You know, these footprints go in a circle. Maybe the natives down here are getting onto this rock and roll kick. Bad. He's bad. Oh, they'll get over it. Kids will be kids. Can it, Sammy? Oh, it does look like you're performing a dance or a ceremony. Well, what do you know? I thought of it. Not too big nor too deep. What do you make of it, Chris? All footprints of women. You think they're recent? Well, it's hard to say. The tide doesn't come up this far. Nothing to disturb the prints. Could have been made days ago. Well, thank goodness they're human. Well, I'm not so sure, Jerry. There's a peculiar mark at the end of the toes. It could be claws. Hard to say in this dry sand. Are you trying to scare me? I'm trying to prepare you for a possibility, Jerry. What possibility? Hey, what's he? This is island of evil. 
Oh, come on now, really. Don't laugh, Jerry. I think he's right. And do you know what I think? I think it's time you stopped all this childish mumbo-jumbo. You wheedled money out of my father for the trip, and here we are, in the middle of nowhere. Well, you've had your fun, and you've got your money. Now let's play a new game, like first one home is a hero. There's been more than rumor about these animal people. Chris even spoke to a fisherman who saw one of these creatures a couple of years ago. Now stop being a small brat and pitch in. It'll be dark an hour or so, and we have to make camp. I am absolutely not spending the night on this island. That suits me fine. As far as I'm concerned, you can go take a big jump into that ocean. And while you're there, give the sharks my regards. Sammy, Chris, let's make camp near here. Any luck? It's hard to say. All I got here is a bunch of chop suey. Hey, you got something I can clean the bases of these tubes with? Here. <laughs> Try those. I won't be needing them for a long time. Well, a hairpin for a needle. You've got imagination. I have nothing. Poor little rich girl. Leave me alone. Fred. Do I answer or do I leave you alone? What's going to happen to us? I honestly don't know, Jerry. Maybe a search party will find us. If Sammy can get that radio in good shape, we can call for help. Perhaps those high altitude bombers will settle matters for us tomorrow. Maybe the animal people. Hey, come here, come here, everybody. What is it? Is it fixed? We're famous. What do you mean? What did you hear? We're famous dead people. Oh, Sammy. <laughs> no kidding. I just heard the news report. They found the wreckage of another boat, and they think it's us. That means they'll give up the search for us. Well, at least they said nice things about us. Except the announcer kept calling me Samuel Ching. You know, I was christened Sammy. You've got to get that radio working both ways. That's our only hope to summon help now. Fred, I'm tired. Sure, Jerry. There's nothing we can do now. We might as well all turn in. We'll try and get a look around the island tomorrow. I'm supposed to sleep on this? Birds stand on one leg. Want to try that? Very funny. Ha ha. Here, give me some privacy while I undress. I feel a lot safer when I'm tucked in. You going to have a look around the island tomorrow? Sammy and I are. You can give Chris a hand around the camp. Not on your life. I'm going with you. Now look, I don't think that you... I'm not interested in your opinions. My father paid for this trip, and I want the full sightseeing tour. I was only interested in your safety. There's no telling what we may run into. But you're the boss, lady. I guess you think I'm a pretty big heel, don't you? Not at all. Oh? Just a medium-sized heel. I should have known better. Where are you going to sleep? By the fire with the others. Good night. What was that? Well, it's nothing at all. Just, just a serve. You go on to sleep, huh? If you need anything, yell. Well, you heard it too, huh? Someone's out there. I never saw a drum that could beat itself. We'll stand guard during the night. Chris, let me have your knife. I'll take the first watch and I'll call you when I feel tired.
like it. We're about to wait for her all day. You wait here, Mr. Mackle. I'll go fetch her. too close for comfort. Are you all right, Miss Jerry? Okay. You were very brave. I didn't think I had it in me. Thank you, Fred. If we ever get out of this thing alive, I'll see that Dad pays you well for this. Thanks. Let's get going. I want to be sure and give you your money's worth. If you think you can guide this excursion any better, you're welcome to it. Ooh, now who's on their high horse? Hey, look. Here's the clue that'll lead us to what we're looking for. Look at the insignia on it. What do you make of it? A Maltese cross with a skull and crossbone. I've seen that insignia someplace before. I've got it. Why, that's the insignia of my fraternity at college. Boy, now we are making progress, huh, Mr. Macklin? Yes, we are, Sammy. Do you have your fraternity pin on you? Never without it. That's funny. I'm, I'm sure I had it on me. You did. Sammy Ching. It's got your name on it. Jumping one ton. Now we are under something. What do you figure it means, Mr. Mackin? It could only mean one thing, Sammy. We've been walking in circles. It's your pen. You probably dropped it the last time through. I'm surrounded with idiots. Come on, let's go back to the beach. I'll leave. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Come on, we'll go this way. <laughs> uh, you make this shot, you can have anything you want for dinner. Oh, 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 I'm Kentucky Fried Chicken, Mom. You got it, superstar. Kids love Kentucky Fried Chicken, just like other folks. And with all those delicious fixins, what a meal. It's finger licking good! Real goodness from Kentucky Fried Chicken. Cost of living got you down. Prices are so hot, I take a ladder to go shopping. Cost of living got you down. Money used to burn a hole in my pocket. Now it isn't even there long enough to get warm. <laughs> There's one bargain left in town. Campbell Soups. Try chicken with rice. Best parts of the chicken, fluffy rice, and two chicken stocks for extra flavor. About six cents a seven-ounce serving. Sit right down and get your Campbell's worth. Mother always told me, sit up straight, eat all your vegetables, and stay out of small foreign cars. But Joey... Mother never told me about Ultra Bright. We'll tell you, Ultra Bright has more whitener than any leading toothpaste, yet it's as safely gentle for teeth as the leading children's fluoride. Mother had a feeling I might be too appealing, so Mother never told me about Ultra Bright. Something's happened to the camp. Mr. Macklin, what's happened? I don't know. Where's Chris? The radio. It's all smashed. I don't like the looks of this, Sammy. Chris! Chris! Ah! No. Snipe is gone. Hey, look. Bloodstains. Footprints. I'll follow them. They might lead to something. No. No, Sammy. We better stick together from now on. At least we'll have the odds on our side. There's nothing we can do for poor Chris. 
Let's follow the bloodstains. Sammy, I'm scared. You know something, Miss Jerry? If it'll make you feel any better, so am I. for dad ever since I can remember. I only grew to know him the last two days. Now he's dead. What's the difference? One of us will be next. At least he'll always be near the sea he loves so well. Where do we go from here, Mr. Macklin? I'm not sure. We can't stay here. There may have been others like the one we found. We'll have to take our chances in the jungle. Yeah. I'd rather be looking for the she-demons than have them find us. Jerry, it's time to go. Sounds like water. It's over this way. That water's boiling. Probably due to some volcanic action. Let's follow the stream. Maybe it'll lead us to something. Well, at least we won't get lost. Tell me, I don't know. Don't ask me, I don't care. You tired? At a slight disadvantage. We left in such a hurry, I only packed one pair of feet. Oh, if my friends could only see me now. What I wouldn't give for a nice, chill glass of champagne. Miss Turner, what is your pleasure this evening? Well, uh, first, my good man, I'd like some uh, chilled madrilane. Uh, make sure it's very, very chilled. That is the specialty of the house, mademoiselle. And for an entree? Mm, a sliced tenderloin, but only if it's rare. Oh, stop it. My stomach's doing backflips. It must be. I can hear it from here. Sounds like uh, drums. Yeah. You hear it too, huh? Shh, listen. It's coming from that direction. Come on, this is what we were waiting for.
she, David's? Well, they're dressed the same, but the faces, they're normal. Even better. See what's on the other side of that tunnel. If anything should happen, you two make it back to the beach. Please be careful. Do you really care? It's just that I've gotten used to you, that's all. Can't figure it out. So, all is in readiness. How long must this continue, Carl? The experiments are almost completed, my dear. Uh, doctor, I told you never to come into this laboratory when I'm busy. Get him out! Get him out! I will not look at the hair, Osler. Well, What's so important? Speak up. I've got work to do. I came to report that I have recaptured the escaped Fransimus. And you interrupt me to tell me that? Of course you've rounded them up. Where could they have gone? Carl, get him out. Make him go away. You heard what my wife said. Yes! <laughs> oh, my niche, my niche. Hmm. A healthy specimen. <laughs> Soon you will be beautiful again, my dear. Now, if you are ready, we can continue the experiment. All right. <laughs> Always the same reaction. A mindless animal. But struggling, my little beast. In a few days, you'll be human again as before.
that will teach you. And that goes for the rest of you. Try to escape again, I give you some of the same. Franzimus. Schweinhund. Can't we do something for her? Keep your eyes open. Dead. I'm frightened. Where are we? What is this? Some kind of a torture camp. Why, the Nazis were experts at it. <laughs> this noise will attract the guards. There's an entrance leading into the mountain. You game? Couldn't be any worse than this. You want to bet? Taken a long time to cut all this away. All of these islands are of volcanic origin. I suspect these lava tubes were converted into rooms. Couldn't make a better hiding place. Let's see what's in there. Won't just make your food a fresh at Taco Bell, Taco Bell. Can you feel your taste buds tingle? Taco Bell, Taco Bell. Won't just make you a burrito. It's supposed to be good for you. Did you try it? I'm not gonna try it. You try it. I'm not gonna try it. Let's get Mikey. Yeah. He won't need it. He hates everything. He likes it. Hey, Mikey. When you bring life home, don't tell the kids it's one of those nutritional cereals you've been trying to get them to eat. You're the only one who has to know. going to be all right. We'll find a way out of this. Why do you keep saying that? You know it isn't true. If it isn't the snakes or the, the bombs and all those horrible creatures, it'll be something else. I tried to be brave. I really tried. Look at me a moment. You've been very brave. It's the first time I've seen the real you. The you that's been hidden behind a hard, tough crust. Forgive me, Fred. I didn't mean to make a scene. It's just that this has all been such a terrible nightmare. I guess it got the better of me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The best of you. You know something, Fred? I never asked forgiveness from anyone before. Yet I asked you to forgive me, and I meant it. Funny, it wasn't hard to say. In fact, it felt quite natural. You 
You've given me more courage than I've ever known before. It's always been there. You've just shaken it loose. All my life I've had anything I wanted, everything money could buy. Yet in two days on this island, I've found something that all the money in the world can't buy. We may only have a short time. You've made me realize what an empty, self-centered person I've been. Whatever happens, I want you to know that. Area. Some of us cut the girl down. Otto. will be pleased to meet you. I will take you to him personally. He will regret and apologize for the insults I suffered today. Come over here so that I can see you better. Ah, you are more beautiful than I thought. Perhaps Herr Osler would see fit to make a present of you to Igor. Yes, in exchange for the Medal of Honor, I would gratefully accept such a beautiful gift. Where did you come from? How did you get here? I guess you want the truth. You're not only beautiful, you are smart. I will know if you are lying. I just swooshed in on a dry martini. What is this swoosh? It means to float, American slang. So you floated in on a dry martini. I have heard of this martini. So the Americans are still using them, eh? Are you alone? Practically. I do not understand your answer. Make yourself clear. Would you repeat the question, please? I am beginning to lose my patience with you, Fraulein. Perhaps you are not aware of the fact you are a prisoner of the German Reich. I've got big news for you, fatso. Shut up! I will teach you to have respect for me. Okay, big boy. You look pretty good with those helpless women. Let's see how you do with me. Sammy. 
Get Jerry out of here. Wait at the top of the stairs. And don't let any of his buddies in. But Mr. Mackin. Do as I say. That was your fatal mistake, American swine. <laughs> Him in. I'll meet you at the tunnel. Get going! Awfully crowded out there. Well, as crowded as it's going to be in here when the head man finds out what's happened. Not much of a choice, but if I have a vote, I'll take my chances out there with Dan. Oh. Oh, sorry. Does it hurt bad? Only when I laugh. That slob must have worn brass knuckles. You sure he didn't have a friend? You were no slouch yourself, Mr. Macklin. Well, let's get going before rigor mortis sets in. Hendo! Hendo! We're making the best of our simple island life. Someday, maybe I shall return to the fatherland. I doubt that very much, Colonel Carl Osler. Hmm? Or do you prefer to be known as the butcher? I don't understand you. Well, you have a short memory. Or perhaps you'd rather forget. You see, Colonel Osler, I happen to know that you're one of the most wanted men by the War Crime Commission. You flatter me. I didn't know I was so well known. There are hundreds of families in Europe who will never forget you as the butcher. Colonel Osler earned his nickname by using unfortunate Nazi prisoners as human guinea pigs. Lügen! Das sind alles Lügen! Das sind alles Lies! I was merely fulfilling my responsibility as a soldier of the Führer in developing a master race. Those women in the cages, Dr. Osler. Those she-demons. She-demons? <laughs> What an amusing name for my specimens. She-demons. <laughs> it's very amusing, but quite appropriate. Would those be the girls who disappeared from the island of Portonais about ten years ago? You seem to be very well informed. Perhaps too well informed. How much does the world know of this? Only rumors. Vague rumors. Why don't you give us the facts? <laughs> you must be joking. Since you won't have an opportunity to repeat it, why not? It's true. During the war, I performed some of the experiments which might be termed unethical. But I simply couldn't pass up the opportunity. You see, the people involved were sentenced to die, and how they died was unimportant. My obligation was to develop a method of replacing scar tissue on the human body by new skin. You see, my Fuhrer believed that since we were developing a master race, there would be no place for scarred war veterans. Every Nazi 
was supposed to be a perfect human specimen. And he actually believed that? Believed it? We proved it. A colleague and I successfully transformed scar tissue on a woman's body into clear new skin through the use of radiation. Unfortunately, the subject died shortly after the experiment due to the extreme radiation dosages. Well, that doesn't sound like a successful treatment. I'm sure that if we had been given enough time, we would have solved the problem of the radiation dosages. But what has that to do with the laboratory here? It was during the course of this experimentation that we quite accidentally discovered a potential power of incomparable magnitude from the source of our radiation. You see, this source was hot volcanic matter. You mean lava? Yes, precisely. The largest natural resource on this earth. Lava a natural resource? Why, of course. Whereas oil and coal and iron are known to us only on the extreme crust of the earth, the entire center is a mass of boiling rock. If someone could discover a use for this lava, well, they could have a constant supply of ready-made power from now until kingdom come. Yes, yes. Your observation is quite close. But we went one step further. Let me show you. You are looking at molten lava. It has a temperature of over 65,000 degrees Fahrenheit and maintains it constantly. If this fire were to cool by as much as a thousand degrees, the surface of the earth would in time be covered by a layer of ice. Because we learned about these islands, I was sent here during the war by our chiefs of staff to continue our research on what we termed thermal energy. What you see here is the result of years of labor. Well, you lost me a long time ago, but go ahead. <laughs> it's really quite simple. Unfortunately, it takes an enormous amount of equipment. What we are doing is electronically extracting the heat from the center of the Earth and converting it into useful power. You see the generators which make the electricity that drives this machinery, use this power. Unfortunately, we can only use a very small amount of it, and the rest has to go to waste. Then actually, you don't use the lava, only the heat from it. Now, from this heat, you manufacture electricity. That is used to extract the original power source. Is that correct? That's basically correct. And what you're saying is you have accomplished perpetual motion. That is quite correct. You see, although I have succeeded in completing the most sought-after dream of mankind since time immemorial, I have to keep it a closed secret between myself and my creatures. But what about all this equipment? Oh, that was much easier than you suspect. It was really quite a simple matter to build our quarters and the generators and the laboratory with labor and material brought here by submarine. Are you aware that this island is being used for bombing practice by our naval air force? Quite aware. They have bombed here many times. But we are quite safe, you see. From view and from bombs, everything is built underground. Well, why hasn't someone discovered this island before? Some have. Like yourselves, come here accidentally. Naturally, they can never leave alive. The rest are kept away by the convenient orders of your naval air force. What are you doing here? Carl, I heard that we have visitors. It has been so long that I thought... <laughs> That's correct, but these are strangers. Oh, you're so beautiful. I'm so glad you came. I was just saying to Mona. Carl the other day that... Mona, can't you see we are busy? Now, you will leave us now. Yes, Carl. As you say, Carl. Yeah, you will have time later. Our friends are planning to stay on the island for a very long time. Oh, 
I see. You're wondering about Mona. Hmm? Mona's my wife. She once was a very beautiful woman. She was my laboratory assistant when I married her many years ago. And later she continued to work with me here on the island. And one day, a terrible accident happened. She was severely burned during ex experimentation by exhaust from the lava. I vowed to spend the rest of my life to make her beautiful again. The girls? Yes. I have made some refinements on a discarded theory based on the exchange of what I term character X between a healthy specimen and my wife. What is a character X? We all have in us a chemical quality composed of genes. That gives us our personal appearance, our, uh, our individual character. To eliminate it, would be fatal. Therefore, I have devised a very complicated method by which I can physically exchange this uh, secretion between two living persons. Those creatures out there are a reflection of your wife's disfigurement. But the fangs, the claws, their animal instincts. Oh, well, unfortunately, a full transfusion of character X from Mona would be so void of character genes that, that it might be fatal. Therefore, it was necessary to reinforce this substance passing from Mona to the girls by character X from a combination of animals. So, in addition to your wife's genes, those poor girls are being injected with gene cells, or character X as you call it, from animals. Then that counts for their animalistic mannerisms. Do not be sorry for my little specimens, because in a few days they'll be able to rebuild their own character cells again and be normal as before. Which is very convenient, because that way I can use them over and over again. You're mad. Completely insane. No, my dear. You are mistaken. It's only the unimaginative who cannot believe that man is capable of improving on nature. We've seen the results of your errors, Dr. Osler. But what of Mona? We've discussed enough. I told you much more than I intended. Take the girl to the women's isolation room. That's merely a precautionary measure. What happens to us now? I suppose you realize the extent of damage and inconvenience you have caused? Also, you have killed my most faithful and trusted guard. I expect you will find the punishment, even considering your American standards, for the time being, rather lenient. You can do what you want to with us. But if there's any sense of decency left in that worm-ridden body of yours, I hope you'll have some consideration for Jerry. Already taking that into consideration, you are worrying needlessly. I have something very special planned for her. You harm that girl and I'll kill you if it's the last thing I ever do, understand? You do not seem to be in a position to dictate anything. Ah. The next time we meet, I do not think you will have the exuberance that you so foolishly display now. My soldiers will see to that. Der arme Mann ist durstig. Ich gebe ihm Wasser. <laughs> Haben Sie Durst? Dolls Wasser Trinkschwein. Das ist from Igor. Aufstehen. <laughs> 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 Obey my command. I said, get up! Schwein! 
Listen, you filthy slob. I can take all your dish out and more. He's had enough. Here is company, my lovely maidens. <laughs> they don't kid around, do they? Real tough eggs. Filthy scum. Anything I can do for you? Yeah, you can teach me to keep my big mouth shut. I really talk myself into one then. I'll lie back. Maybe we can sleep it off. Look at them. Boy, at least they don't know what's going on. Hey, if you don't think there's any chance of we figuring his plans, do you? Who'd want a wife with our face? <laughs> yeah, never thought of that. At least that's something in our favor. The only thing. Well, we got nothing to lose. If we could only figure something out. You got any ideas? Maybe if we could fit a hairpin in that lock. It's been done before, you know. It wouldn't work then either. Hey, you asleep? I'm just thinking. Uh, Jerry? Yeah. Yeah, I was thinking about that too. There's only something I could do. Knowing Oslin, his barbaric reputation, there's no telling what torture she's going through. What do you call a kid who can die like that? You call that kid a cracker jack. And what do you call a kid who gives the ball a whack? You call that kid a cracker jack. And what do you call a snack with a secret toy surprise in the back? Peanuts and popcorn that make your lips smack. It's caramel coated cracker jack. When you're really good, they call you cracker jack. There are so many balsam products, but this is the one that started it all. Wella Balsam. It's the original balsam. In just one minute, it makes your hair strong, shiny, and easy to comb. That's why everyone tried to copy it. Because it works. See? You can tell the difference. So can your hair. So get the original. Wella Balsam Instant Hair Conditioner and Wella Balsam Shampoo. You'll love your hair. Most unfortunate that I have to serve my choicest vintage in this inadequate, inappropriate manner, but you understand that after 12 years, our supply of luxury items is severely depleted. <laughs> Will you accept this as a token of my esteem and of my admiration for your charm and for your beauty? Let's toast to the beginning of a long and pleasurable association. Hmm? Don't be bashful. Oh, you are tired, hmm? Come, drink this and relax. It will make you feel much better. Come on, don't act like a child. Do you know that I went to considerable effort to have this room arranged so that it's comfortable and congenial to the occasion? Now, come on, consider me a friend. Don't be afraid. Come, let's drink together. Where's Mona and Mr. Macklin? Why aren't they here? Oh, how <laughs> Stupid of me. At the last moment, I decided that the late hour is not beneficial to Mona's health. Mona needs a whole night's rest. Your friend, Mr. Macklin, sends his regrets. He said he wasn't feeling well. He wants to be excused. What have you done to Fred? Oh, there's no reason for concern. Both of your friends are exceptionally well being cared for. I have given personal orders that they receive special attention by my most congenial guardsmen. Do you think I would have come here if I thought we were going to be alone? Or that I would put on this mothball monstrosity for you? Monstrosity? You are simply beautiful, Amy. This dress has been in Mona's closet for a long time. I never have I seen it look so striking. 
I've been very patient with you. Now, please, don't let's argue on such a beautiful night. Hmm? My only wish is to please you. If you wish to please me, drop dead. There's no need for bitterness, Miss Turner. However, if you insist, I'm quite capable of employing, let's say, more persuasive measures. However, I don't intend to let this champagne go to waste. In that case, I have to be a bad host and drink alone. Here's to your happiness. And to mine. All my life, I've spent in the service of my country. I've done my duty well. Most of these medals here are bestowed by the Führer personally. I've accomplished scientific achievements that all the men in the world haven't been able to do. I'm master of my own island, with a specially trained force of men to serve my every need. I have everything. Everything a man can wish. But I have nothing. See, I am very fond of my wife. But I'm very lonely. Unfortunately, you don't understand. I understand perfectly, and if you don't mind, I think I'll go to my room. No, stay here. Come, look at the island. Isn't it beautiful? It's yours. It is yours to reign over as my queen. Everything that I have, everything I've worked for in all these years is yours. I'll give it to you, understand? I'll give it to you in exchange for yours. I must have you. I must... That was very foolish of you. I have other ways to make you realize. Perhaps you will change your mind when you hear that the life of your American swine depends on your decision. You wouldn't dare. It's another one of your filthy lying tricks. Ah! I have dealt with situations like this before. Remember? I used to serve in concentration camps. A human life is of no consequence to me. You inhuman beast. What have you done with Fred and Sammy? I've trained my soldiers well in the art of persuasive torture. You've already murdered them. No. They have suffered inconveniences, yes. But how long they suffered. And when they die, that's entirely up to your decision. I continue to refuse? And I have only one alternative. That I must utilize your beauty to further the experiments on my wife. She demon? Yes. You see, you understand me perfectly. But this isn't necessary. None of this is necessary. It will just be reasonable. If it just... Keep away from me. Come on. You're so beautiful, I think. <laughs> Jerry, it's our only chance. Please, don't use a tunnel. Hide somewhere in the jungle. You'll be safe until daylight. Maybe there's some other way out. The escape demons are out there. I'll chance it. Afraid? I don't know. Quickly, they're coming. I'll find a way. I'll be back. Bucket! Bucket! Schnell, you idiot! The girl has escaped!
Be afraid. I'm here to help you. Mom, I thought you were asleep. What are you doing here? Carl also thought that I was in my room. I have been very much awake. The shadows of this night have revealed a great deal to me. Mom, let me explain. No explanations are necessary. You see, the last time I wore that dress was in that very same room. Just before the accident, many years ago, we were younger and much in love. <laughs> he promised me the island too. That was long ago. Now all I have to live for is a moment when I can remove these bandages and once again face the world. How bad is your face? Shortly after the accident, Carl ordered all of the mirrors on the island destroyed. I have never seen my face since. I left a small compact mirror with my clothes in your dressing room. If you should find it, I don't think there'd be any harm done. Listen, the soldiers have left. On the other side of the island, you will find a small rowboat. If you hurry, you can make it before sunrise. Why are you doing this? You know if I escape, I have to tell the authorities. I have no choice. In either case, I would lose Carl. I prefer to lose him to the authorities. I can't leave now, Mona. But why not? Well, not without my friends. You must be very much in love to make such a sacrifice. Here. Take this. It is a key to the lock on their cage. I will show you an easier way back. Would you help me to get my clothes? I can't get around very well in this. You might be able to wear it again soon. I'll never forget you for this, Mona. There's one thing I must warn you of. If anything should happen, I will not be able to help you any further. Do you understand? Then come, I will lead you part of the way. I was worried about you. I thought I'd lost you. Gosh, you're a sight for sore eyes, and for once I really got them. But what are you doing here? The key to our cell? Where'd you get it? Secret, I'll tell you later. Listen, I know where there's a boat. How do we get there? Mountain trail, I'll eat you. Sammy, see where the guard is. I don't know how you did it. It's clear now. Meet us around at the door. Now.
join you? You are trembling. You must be cold. No wonder. It's so late. Perhaps we all better turn in and get a good night's rest. I just remember. I have some important work tomorrow in the laboratory. Except for the piercing of the needle, you will feel little or no pain. Struggling is of no avail. It only tends to heighten your pulse and raise your blood pressure to a dangerous point. Please, I beg of you, do what you want with us, but in heaven's name, release the girl. Have you no human dignity left? Miss Turner, in a few moments, your features will turn into a deformed being with the characteristics of an animal. In a few days, you will be normal again. But unfortunately, you will never remember who you are. For the rest of your life, you will live without identity. For the last time, I give you an opportunity to change your mind on the basis of our discussion last night. Well, then, we proceed with the operation. What's that? Do you hear that? Hmm? Sounds like planes. It's probably a patrol. Yeah, they started to bomb the island. They've bombed before. We are safe. Stop! What are you doing? This will not continue. You have done enough harm. But Moon, I am doing this for you. Let me continue. It was I who gave them the key to escape. Why did you do this, Mona? Because of what you have done to me. on Carl if necessary. I could not bring myself to do it. Here. You may have use for it. It will be dangerous to use the stairs. There's a tunnel over there. You'll find safety on the other side. Good luck. Oh, Miss Turner. Thank you most graciously for the mirror. Mona, you must come with us. Thank you. You're most kind, but my place is here by my husband's side. But why? Why? Would you go if you look like this? <laughs> Yeah, let's blow this crap. 
crazy fire trap. crater. The way things are going, this will be a molten lava pit any minute. We'll try to get out of that side over there. It's, it looks the easiest. How about Sammy? Are you ready? Anything could look so good. And there's the rowboat. We've got it made now. Hey, you two, don't start counting your fortune cookies before they're baked. I don't exactly look forward to a 300-mile rowing excursion back to the mainland. Well, uh, we've got nothing to worry about. As soon as those pilots report the volcanic eruption out here, we'll have the whole fleet for company. Got all the company I need right now. You two can boil if you want to. I'm going down to the boat. This is me, mm, Neptune. Well, cats are like us, aren't they? They need their bit of fish too. Oh yes, he loves his Neptune. You should see him. He can't wait. Well, it is from Whiskers. Yes, and it's got those real fish pieces. Neptune really looks delicious, and my Sammy thinks so too. He never leaves any. Well, it's like I say, Mrs. B. That's Whiskers for you. Whiskers Neptune gives your cat the fish he wants the way he likes it. What you're about to see is the world's most revolutionary telephone switching invention. We call it Super Switcher. 
It has almost no moving parts, yet handles four times more calls than its predecessor. It required an investment of $400 million, but should ultimately save a billion dollars a year. And soon, every major American area will have one. Looks dull, eh? Well, imagine that each of these cars is a long-distance call. This new invention can handle over half a million an hour. That's five days traffic on a busy Los Angeles freeway. Super Switcher. It should go a long distance to prevent traffic jams on your long distance calls. The Bell System. People using technology to help keep down costs and improve service. Keeping your phone system the best in the world. When did you start baking from scratch? It's not scratch, Mom. It's new Pillsbury Plus. A yellow cake this firm could only be from scratch. It's Pillsbury Plus. A cake this moist could only be from scratch. A cake this rich could only be from scratch. It's Pillsbury Plus. The plus is pudding. Mm. Pudding right in the mix to add that moistness. Mmm, rich flavor. New Pillsbury Plus, huh? Looks like scratch has met its match. 